isolation is bad for you. You can say I'm wrong. You can say that isolation will build you more muscle or more strength or anything. I train with one isolation exercise per workout. And I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm very strong. I have an athletic and aesthetic body. This is a picture of him. This is a picture of me. And this is what I call an empty physique. This is what I call a full physique. The empty physique looks like there, there, there was muscle added on top of, a, of on top of a skinny person. So it's just a skinny person with muscle. The full physique that I have looks like there has been muscle mutating out of me, right? That like, like I have. Like I have some 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 radiation issue, right? And, and that that it's just mutated in that way. Do you understand that that the the that the full physique looks like I have a core that grew my muscles, right? That that, that simply like pushed the muscles outwards. Like I, I can't really I can't really explain this in a in in a way that makes sense. But this just looks like there is a core inside of me, like there, like 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 I'm heavier, like I'm bigger, and I am heavier, but not the difference that you would think how much heavier do you think I am than this four kilograms I'm heavier than this <laughs> probably even less the last time I measured I weighed like 85 84 something like that 86 and this guy weighs 82 so I'm not that much heavier the difference is that I don't do isolation exercises and what this does, it basically makes the muscles that are around the main muscle that I want to train, it makes it grow. Those small stabilization muscles that push your, that push your muscles out a little bit and that, that just make you seem or make you look really fucking strong and that make you actually become stronger, those are the muscles that you build on the last rep of bench press when you're like pressing with the worst form ever and when you can barely get up the weight. That is the rep you do to look like an absolute unit. And in this video, we're gonna uncover the way that I train. And I call it the gladiator training regimen because it's pretty much like the gladiators used to train. Now, how did a gladiator train? He didn't train with a machine, right? He trained with free weights. And you think you can switch off here, but don't. I'm gonna uncover three specific exercises that you probably don't do that I'm gonna tell you in this video that will absolutely build those muscles that are around the main muscle you want to build and that will make you look like more of a powerful man. And we need to talk about body dysmorphia here because body dysmorphia doesn't come from looking weak, it doesn't come from looking small. There are big people who have body dysmorphia, there are small people who have body dysmorphia, so it does have nothing to do with the amount of muscle mass that there is, because I know people who have less muscle than other people, and the people with less muscle sometimes have no body dysmorphia, whilst the people with a little bit more muscle have body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia comes from not looking masculine. Think about the guy who has body dysmorphia. Does he look like this? No. He looks like a little soy boy. He doesn't look like this or like this. He looks like this. He looks like a little soy bean. He looks not masculine. And the way you cure body dysmorphia is by simply becoming more masculine, looking more masculine. And these three exercises that I'm about to tell you will basically train the muscles that make the slight small little difference between the man who looks powerful, who looks masculine, and the man who looks like a bitch. The first exercise is wall pushes, and you've probably never done this exercise. I discovered this exercise when I was downright roid raging, <laughs> when I had like a little testosterone boost, and then I was simply like so aggressive that I wanted to push something. And I looked at my door and I thought, I will fuck you up. <laughs> At my door, I just pushed it, right? I, I pushed the door like, like I wanted to close it. And I discovered after doing that for five minutes, my shoulders were sore, my chest was sore, everything was sore. But it wasn't like the big pec muscle like, like you see right here. It was the small muscle surrounding the pec muscle. 
it was the very small muscles in, in the shoulder that you can't even know the name of. And those muscles, those blunt force muscles, how I call them, those muscles that you don't really activate in an isolated way because they're so small, but they will make the difference because they will push your muscles out a little bit more and they will push your muscles in ways that you don't know right now and that will make you look stable and powerful and not easy to push over. And wall pushes basically work as they sound. You get to a wall, you imagine it being, I don't know, your high school math teacher or something else. And you grab your hands and you push this wall with all the force you have for a minute, half a minute, 20 seconds, depends on how far you've advanced. I would recommend starting with 30 seconds of wall pushes and that for three sets or five sets or however many sets you want to do. I'm the last person to restrict you in terms of volume. So do as much as you want of this. For absolute brutal beginners, I would recommend three to five sets of 30 to one minute, of 30 seconds to one minute of wall push. That's the first exercise, it's very simple. You don't have to push in any specific way, you just simply push. If you want to alter your position, alter your position. This is a masculine exercise, this is just an exercise where you focus on bluntly putting force and power onto an object and this is what we need to do. This will boost your testosterone because it's just a primal way of moving. Look at the picture of Samson. He looks like a man in this picture. He looks like he's just grabbing that lion and throwing him over and playing with him like he would play with a toy. And this is the way you need to do wall pushes. You need to simply like, like imagine the wall being an object that you can really move. Of course you can't move a wall. You can additionally do this with trees or with anything static. You can try push a squad rack around. You can try, I don't know, push an obese person around <laughs> but you just need to find some immovable object or hard to move object and move that shit around that will develop what I call blunt force that will then translate into a blunt physique that will then be a full physique that we all strive and aim for or that we all should strive and aim for the second exercise is snatches and snatches is something you think only Olympic weightlifters do but snatches develop the opposite muscles of what wall pushes do. Wall pushes develop all the muscles in front. Your six pack stabilizes you while you push. Your front delts do most of the work and your chest stabilizes you and your tricep gets your arms stabilized and all of this. On snatches, it's the opposite. You have to basically stabilize with your back. I'll show a couple videos where I do snatches. So first of all, you see that I actually do what I tell you. And to second of all, show you the muscles that get like sort of strengthened in this exercise. You see that my back is fully engaged with this. And this will also create blunt force because you can't, you don't really exercise one, one muscle in this. You exercise all the muscles together, which will then create the muscles that are along the spine that you can only build with heavy compound movements that will build more core strength, higher explosivity, better flexibility that you also, of course, need to not get injured. And it will also develop the blunt force needed to get a blunt physique. The third exercise that I will genuinely recommend to you is partial ego lifting. So weight that you know is a little bit too heavy, but not like too heavy so you know that you can't do a rep. I recommend training heavy as fuck with this and going into feasts of strength, going into I am stronger than you on this machine, I'm stronger than you on this exercise, all those different things and just training with, with free weights and training heavy will help you develop stabilization muscles. Because think, think about why beginners shouldn't do free weight because they don't have the stabilization muscles. And because they say, okay, I've built muscle with machines. So I'll simply stay away from, from doing heavy compound exercises with free weight because I don't want to get injured. Um, Spoiler alert, the people who only go on machines um, are injured more often than me. <laughs> um, 
which is pretty funny I think because they train in a way that they think shouldn't get them injured and then they get injured anyway <laughs> and there I am ego lifting and, and essentially training heavy and with the weights they would never touch because they think it's way too heavy you're gonna injure yourself blah 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 first of all God is with me that's why I don't injure myself and second of all I have to have took the time to to stabilize my joints to 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 develop the stabilization um to, to develop the stabilization muscles that are around the joint and i'm going to show a couple exercises while i tell this to you in an overlay in what's called an overlay in the video that you see on screen right now that will strengthen your joints that will actually help you prepare for a heavy compound movement because of course you could start with a heavy compound movement but you will probably die if um, 225 kilograms of bench just flip over on you when you can only bench for 60 kg max <laughs> so don't do the valentine's day suicide <laughs> um, but rather do these exercises that i have put together over years of heavy compound lifting and over years of having to stabilize my arms these exercises will stabilize your shoulder and I'll also put maybe a couple of them to stabilize your knees and yeah the whole point of this is to train over failure so on wall push on snatches on everything don't stop when you fail when you fail on a snatch it looks like this not like this if you're not an idiot and train with like 500 pounds you won't fucking die okay grab the bar like this and not like this so don't do suicide grip when you're doing snatches duh <laughs> simply grip the bar safely and don't let your arms bend and then you won't injure yourself you might fall on your back but that's also pretty improbable right most people will fall to the front and then you're safe right you can just put the bar off and so train one rep over that don't stop when you fail, stop when you are done. Which is especially true for wall push. If you stop by failure, wall push won't do anything because you will probably press like this. What you need to do is you train you need to train so hard that your shoulders get tired and then you need to switch in your elbows, press like this and then you need to press like this and put your arms around and you push with your head and you need to push to a point when you are literally pushing with your shoulder into that ball and you can do that you can push in any fucking way you just need to push that wall you can push backwards you can put your back against the wall and push with your feet you can you can put your head against the wall and push with your head if you want to you can push with anything you can push with your elbows out like this you can push in any way possible but you just need to push that wall to failure until you have to use all the positions you can because the muscles that you used before are too weak to continue stabilizing an additional exercise that is sort of a bonus that the fourth exercise of this is the the exercise that andrew tate loves to do where you basically take dumbbells and i'll show it to you quickly and you take dumbbells and you basically punch forward with them and what you need to do is you need to do this so long that you can't anymore and then you need to use your core you need to kind of like when you're ego lifting you have to like use your use the air you have inside of you and you need to kind of go into this this press exhaling to kind of get it and you and you need to go into this into this push mode i don't know if you if you know what i mean right now it's pretty stupid to explain it in this way but it's basically the mode where you flex the the core of your body where you flex your your organs and you essentially just just go blunt force and throw these things forward and that's the stage you need to be in for this to be effective you can say oh it trains discipline it's painful blah 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 this exercise will strengthen your willpower because it's hard to do this it's harder than you think you can do this with 5 kg and it will be harder than any front delt exercise that you've probably ever done plus you will also get a stronger core you will get stronger lateral delts you get stronger lats everything and you will get stronger blunt force muscle because you won't be going like this 
all the time. You won't be perfect form. You will sometimes just, just go like this and throw your arms forward and then it won't train your front delts. It will train some other muscle. And that's perfect. That's what we want. We want to train the muscles that are around us. And the way I train is linked in the description. It's most of the time one one kind of cable exercise one what no not a cable exercise cables are okay cables aren't machines they could have built cables in ancient rome in fact they did play assassin's creed and pull yourself up one of one of those one of those cable rolls right they so they had it they had it it's it's an assassin's creed so they had it <laughs> um <laughs> the fuck am i doing here man so they had they had blunt force back then they did push exercises heavy full body pushes like we do now and i think it's good to train like this do you think a gladiator had body dysmorphia no do you think warriors had body dysmorphia no they were fucking warriors they were testosterone driven men they were masculine they were all the things we now aspire to be so why don't train like them implement the things I told you today and master your mind. <laughs>